Hi everyone, my name is Brenda Jin. I am an engineer on the platform team at Slack. Some of the things I've worked on so far in my time there are the app directory launch that we did at the end of last year. I've helped with a lot of performance improvements to our API. Um, if you used to use our API a year ago, you would have noticed that the files list method took over two seconds, and now it takes 200 milliseconds. Um, and in my spare time, I also volunteer as the chapter leader for the San Francisco chapter of Girl Develop It. And we have 6,600 members. There's 53 chapters in the United States, and we've taught 66,000 people in our workshops. We teach um, technical workshops as well as career development workshops for anyone who's interested in programming. Great, so that's me. If you'd like to talk to me on Twitter, my handle is Cybernetic Love, and these slides will be available at that link, which we can send out afterwards as well. So I'm here today to talk about how you can make a really easy custom integration with Slack. So what is a custom integration? Don talked about this a little bit before. A custom integration is a type of app that you can build and use on a single Slack team. Um, it's one that's really easy to get up and running with. You don't need OAuth. In this particular demo that I'm going to show you today, you don't need a database. And um, there's a few simple steps that you can take. And this talk will be less than 20 minutes. And hopefully in that time, we'll have deployed some changes and seen them. So you'll see exactly how easy it is to get up and running with this. The other great thing about custom integrations is that you have a unique set of tools that you already use to do what you do, and you have your own workflow. So in the example I'm going to show you with GitHub, I've seen GitHub used all different kinds of ways in different companies, and everyone seems to have their own particular um, cycle of development and workflow. With this, you're going to be able to customize that, customize your notifications according to how you already work. So the demo today is going to be pretty simple. I wanted it to be interactive so that we could look at the results. So I'm going to ask a couple of volunteers to pull up the repository that we're using. And what's going to happen is that when somebody forks or stars my GitHub repository, which is actually the demo for today, we will post a message into Slack. So I'm going to give you the URL for anyone who wants to load it up. It's uh, github.com slash brendagin slash custom-slack-integration. So to give you an overview of what we're going to take a look at, these are the parts of the stateless web app, or what I think of as middleware, that we're going to be taking a look at today. On the one hand, you have your service that you're already using and different actions or events that might happen in that service. Today we're talking about GitHub, but maybe you're interested in your customer interactions, or your sales, or stats that need to run every day. Um, these are important to get notifications for. And so a lot of these services will have a webhook. It's a pretty standard API. Um, those will post, and you will direct them to post to your web app. You'll have some logic to determine, is this information useful? And if it is useful, how do I want it presented in Slack as a notification? You'll assemble a message that gives you the right information and the right context. And then you will post that into Slack with one of Slack's incoming webhooks. So what you'll need for this is a service with a webhook, a stateless server with configuration, which I will show you a very easy node example of, and an incoming webhook in Slack. So the first step is to set up a webhook from GitHub. Let's go ahead and do that together. Can everyone see this? OK, so here's my repository. I'm going to go to my settings. I'm going to go to GitHub Webhooks and Services. And I'm going to actually, just for the demo, I'm going to add a new one. And here, you would put the URL. In this case, I've already deployed. But this is something you can actually go back to later and change. It's not permanent. So for testing purposes, if you need it, just to see the requests that happen, because they have a nice interface below, you can put whatever you want there. And then you can actually filter and select certain events. So I want to know every time someone forks or stars the repository. And I will go ahead and add that webhook. OK, in this case, it already exists. 
So let me go and take a look here. It's all set up. And this is the really nice interface that shows you all of the recent events that happen. So this is one where someone started following. Let's see who it was. This person. Is this person in the room? Yeah. OK, cool. Great. So that was step one. Step two is to create an incoming webhook in Slack. So we're going to go ahead to our page and then take a look at apps and integrations. And then go on over to build, like Don showed you earlier. And then pick something for just my team, incoming webhooks. And we're going to pick the open source channel. We're going to add an incoming webhooks integration. And let's see, I really want to customize this. so. Oh, OK, this is great. This is the webhook URL. And I'm going to upload an image. I have one prepared. It's going to be that one. And then this is how it's going to look. And I'm going to hit Save. Now I'm going to keep track of where this hook is, because I'm going to need to point everything from my web app to that second hook into Slack. So the third step, which is kind of fun, is figuring out what you want your notification to be. There's all different kinds of channels that you can have in Slack. Some of them might be more firehose channels. So maybe they're a firehose of all the PR or all the news events related to something that you're interested in. Other channels might be more conversational, where your team is talking to each other. And sometimes they need to be notified about something and then collaborate about it and then take some other action. So in either case, you're really going to need to filter the events and decide how many notifications do I want, what level of information do I want, and do I want to have another link or some image or something to give more context so that we can react appropriately to the notification. One great way to see how your message is going to look is the message builder, which we released recently. And it's on api.slack.com. You can enter your message JSON and have a really good look at what it's going to be later. So maybe this is for the event where your repository is now being watched. And somebody before asked about whether we can put images in the attachments. That was a really great question, and I thought we could demo it today. Um, if we take a look at this request that came from GitHub, there's actually an avatar URL for this person. So let's go ahead and see if we can put that in here. Um, and I want a little bit of documentation, so I'm going to go over here to attaching content and links. Here we are. I'm going to look for image. And let's see, we can do an image or a thumb. Which one would you like to do? Image? OK, well, go big or go home. <laughs> Let's see. Great. OK, now we know who did that. Um, should we add a color? Yes. <laughs> OK, let's shout out some letters and numbers. So Y, R, A. Are these, these are not valid. They have to be lower than F. Zero, zero, F, 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 F. Zero, zero, F, 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 F. OK, great. That's awesome. Wonderful. So th now we know what the shape of this attachment is going to be. Maybe we need a little bit more information about links and uh, what the name of the repository is and who this person is. A name would be really good. Um, but let's take some of this information and head on over to the next step, which is adding a configuration and then deploying. So here is a very simple Node Express app. It basically just handles a couple of different requests. At the top, we have, um, we're handling a post request. At the bottom, I wanted to be able to deploy and debug and make sure this was running correctly. So I just have this very basic hello. And here, 
inside of where we handle the post request, that's where we're looking for certain types of events. So maybe some of the services you use provide way too much information, right? You might get 200 events where you only care about 10. Maybe you manage um, an open source repository and the only thing you really care about is when docs change. So you want to filter out and pay attention to any pull requests that only relate to docs. So you can set up some logic to make sure that you're only reacting to the appropriate events. And then you can send a message after that. So here is where I'm putting together a message object for fork. I've got some text about the sender, who they are, what in this case what their handle is, um, the repository URL, and the repository name. And this is why it didn't work, because I had a trailing comma. Um, but let's go ahead and add those attachments. Let's see. Is that right? And then maybe I actually want to put this text here instead with the link all set up. Does that look right? Okay, should we get rid of the first one? <laughs> Image URL. Oh, it's hard coded. We actually need um, something else, which is we can look over here, avatar URL, right? Sender, rest.body.sender.avatar URL. Now is it right? Maybe, okay, well, we'll see. All right, oops. Yes. Uh, customizing attachments for the SF HTML5 demo. Okay, let's see if this works. We'll go back over here, and here's the incoming webhook that I added. Oh, one more thing that I want to talk about is. You never saw me put the hook URL into the Node app. I've actually gone ahead and I created another one before and I have it as an environment variable so that I'm not posting it onto GitHub for everyone to see. It wouldn't be a big deal because this is a test app, and, but it could get a little spammy if all of you decide to post into it. Um, so let's see if I can now star. that work? Nope. I wonder if I have a, an error here. So I'm going to look at some recent deliveries and see what happened here. There was another event. And I always send a uh, 200 response, so that was okay. I probably have an error in here somewhere. Hmm. Well, I can roll back two commits to this one, which I know was working. Let's try again. This one isn't going to be as pretty as the teal color that we picked. <laughs> but the nice thing about GitHub is that you can actually re-deliver these. So let's see. Oh, 
Oh, I know why. They went to a different channel. <laughs> Sorry. I configured it to the wrong channel. Um, so here they are. They were showing up. Yeah. And this is with the thumb and the color. <laughs> Troubleshooting 101, is it plugged in? OK. <laughs> Great. Um, so I included in the slides uh, a couple of the links that we use today, a link to the message builder where we designed the way the message looked, um, a link to the node demo on GitHub, which a lot of you have already started and forked, and also a link to our docs for the Slack API. So thank you very much. And I believe Don and I are going to take questions now. Is that right? Yeah. Cool.